Hi and welcome to your sixth bedtime story. I hope these stories are a helpful part of your nighttime routine and that you're sleeping better now. The key to sleep is relaxation. And the key to relaxation is to bring your attention to the present moment. To let go of past and future. And stories help us do just that. So make sure you're comfortable as you're lying down. And just let the words of the story come and go like the waves of the ocean. Rising and falling in a gentle rhythm. If you're ready and lying down comfortably, let's begin tonight's story. Isha and Santosh sat out on the patio of their room in the guest house in Pondicherry, where they had spent the long weekend. It was a delightful old villa in the French style that had been converted into several rooms, each overlooking a corner of the garden, and a central courtyard which served as the dining room and lounge area. It was the quintessential colonial bungalow, painted a cheerful yellow that was only slightly faded from the sun, with tall columns, double-paneled doors and wide windows, and situated just off a beautiful tree-lined street in the old town. Large potted palms, creeping vines and other lush-looking trees and plants occupied every corner, and in the daytime, Sunlight flooded the rooms, setting everything alight. Now the evening sun slanted in through slatted windows and the open courtyard, casting shadows across the pillars and the patio where they sat. What a lovely weekend it's been, Isha said as she leaned back in her recliner, stretching her arms up and then relaxing with a deep sigh. Santosh smiled back. He was half asleep, a book lying open on his chest. They had spent the last two days walking around the former French colonial settlement, soaking in the sights and sounds. They had walked down the promenade at sunset, eaten heavenly crepes, dripping with chocolate at a little cafe, visited the ashram and stopped in at a few boutiques along the way. They had even spent a morning cycling around Oroville, amazed by the beautiful architecture, the solar kitchen, and the other efforts the community had made towards sustainability. It had been a refreshing holiday, filled with sunshine and interesting conversation. It was their last evening before they headed back to Bangalore and to their jobs and they had decided to spend a quiet evening at the guest house, ordering dinner to their room. The morning was wonderfully sunny and they had walked down to the promenade again, sitting at a coffee shop and watching the ocean. By the afternoon though, the sky had turned dark, and they had headed back. As they chatted, dozed, and read on at the patio, the clouds looked about to burst. The fresh, wet smell of the earth rose up all around them, and hundreds of tiny, fluttering insects seemed to be flying about noiselessly, as if in celebration of the coming storm. A few moments later, with a crack of thunder, the rain poured. Isha and Santosh had always loved the rain, especially when they were nice and dry like they were now, with the perfect view. Ever since they'd gotten married eight years before, they loved to spend monsoon evenings in Bangalore together. They often took chairs out to their tiny balcony and drank tea while watching the rain. From their covered veranda here, they looked out over a garden on one side 
and the common courtyard on the other. The little patch of sky they could see was completely overcast. The clouds a dark grey, tinged with a deep purple. The rain was coming down in sheets, drenching the ground and the plants. The cobbled stones that lined the garden turned slippery and shiny as they grew wet. The wind brought a spray of water into their patio, sprinkling their skin with droplets that dazzled like gems on their arms and faces. After the last few humid and sticky days, the cool rain was a relief. The wind wound its way through the foliage, leaves swirling down to the ground in its path. The raindrops beat a steady rhythm on the roof, a gentle pitter-patter that was almost hypnotic in its regularity. Santosh stood up quietly and went into their room behind them. Isha continued to watch the rain, noticing how everything appeared to have slightly blurred edges through the water, how everything looked greener, more fresh and alive. She took a slow, deep breath feeling the freshness enter her lungs. The tiredness in her body from all the walking around in the heat seemed to dissolve away, as though each gust of wind was taking away some of her exhaustion. She smiled as Santosh returned and handed her a cup of tea. He sat down again and they both watched amused as the villa's resident dog Simba got up lazily from one corner of the courtyard, shook himself, splashing drops of water all over the floor where he sat, and then settled down again, curling into himself. The tea was strong and hot and sweet, the perfect combination for this weather. The sky had turned completely dark, and the rain had slowed down a bit. Now the rhythm came from the tap, tap, tap of raindrops, dripping down from the trees onto their roof, and from the edges of the roof itself. The leaves of the plants in the garden looked like they'd been scrubbed clean, and drops of water continued to slide down from their edges to the ground. The wind had slowed down, but an occasional breeze gently rippled through the air, bringing with it the soft tunes of jazz. The owner of the villa must have turned on her music player like she did every evening. The familiar melody fell into a soft rhythm with the tempo of the raindrop. Santosh yawned slowly, and then Isha did too. They smiled, each taking a deep, slow breath, enjoying the feeling of having nothing to do, nowhere to go, just being able to experience this perfect moment. They felt the cool breeze caress their skin, and the touch of the cold stone floor on their bare feet. They were completely immersed in the present, wrapped up in the gentle rhythm of the rain, the music, the rustling of leaves. They could smell something delicious as dinner was being prepared for guests in the kitchen. Simba stood up, stretched languidly, and then strolled over to Isha and Santosh. He hopped up onto their little veranda, sniffed at their feet, his cold nose gently tickling them, before settling onto a small mat in a corner, snuggling up to stay warm. Can you feel how fresh the air is here? Isha asked Santosh, inhaling deeply again. 
She could feel all her joints loosening, the weight of her body sinking gently into the chair beneath her. I can feel all my worries just melting away, as though the winds have carried them to some far-off place. Santosh smiled and closed his eyes. He took a slow, long breath, enjoying the cool air, fragrant with the smell of rain. He could sense a lightness in his neck and shoulders, a sense of release in his hands, fingers and feet. He felt himself letting go and he knew just what Isha meant. In the small patch of sky they could see, a few stars had come up. The clouds had drifted away in the wind. The plants and stones and earth around them glistened. A few puddles reflected the lights that had come on in the garden. Stray drops from the roof and the trees above created perfect circles in the puddles that slowly rippled outwards. The sounds of water dripping down were softer now, more infrequent, like tiny bells ringing in the distance. The music had grown quieter, but stray notes still reached them. Everything was just right. Isha and Santosh smiled at each other before slowly closing their eyes.